Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And can you believe it? I never thought I'd saw I'd see the day. I just I don't know what to say. He Man, <laughs> it's real. Licensed by Mattel into classic media. Oh my God, He Man and Skeletor, who's down here, the Knights Revenant, have both come to raid Shadow Legends. I'm gonna be chatting about how to get them and what I think about it here in today's video. But yeah, it it's it's actually real. I can't believe it. That is just too funny. I suggested that they could add this before, like kind of as a joke. But honestly, it sort of makes sense, right? It sort of makes sense. Um, Skeletor, here he is, the free legendary you're going to get. Uh, for me, I actually never watched He-Man, though I was sort of aware of it being a thing. Uh, I, I'm from Ireland, uh, and I was born in like the early 90s. So it wasn't a massive thing over here, at least for my age group. But I think for most of the player base playing Raid, He-Man is probably a, a cartoon that you grew up with. So this is probably really exciting for a lot of people. I think it, it hits the demographic bang on. Um, yeah, they did a previous champion pass like this uh, for Xena. Uh, but yeah, here we go. So straight up off the bat, as you can see, let's talk about how to get these champions first. Then let's look at the champions themselves. Skeletor is a free login champion. So very simply, log in for seven days and you get Skeletor for free. So free legendary, which is amazing. After that, it does continue uh, for another seven days. On day 14, you get a guaranteed two-star perfect soul for Skeletor. To be honest, that's not a huge deal, but phase two is. So you complete phase one, you're into phase two. Now, this is interesting. If I move me over here, I'm Skeletor now. Um, once unlocked, phase two is only available for 21 days. You have to earn 1,050 of these points, and you get these points from doing this. Now, they've done this before with Chronicler Aedlin, and maybe another chat, I don't remember. But when they did this before, there was a daily maximum cap. So you couldn't come in on day one and just get the full thing done, right? You could only get, I don't know, let's say like 50 points per day or something. I don't know if that's going to be the case. We'll find out once we get there. But this might have a daily cap, and you only have 21 days to get it. Maybe it doesn't have a daily cap. Maybe you can do it infinitely. I guess we'll find out. But just be wary of that. This 21 days, I assume, triggers as soon as you finish phase one. So just be prepared. I mean, at that point, you've logged in for 14 days. You know, just make sure to log in every day. This will be pretty quick to do. If there is a daily cap, it's going to be pretty quick to do. It's not going to take you very long. Um, you'll be able to miss some days for sure as well. Uh, maybe there is no daily cap, who knows? But within this, there's great rewards. You get a Skeletor avatar, which is cool just for like a portrait for your profile. Uh, the three star, four star, and then the five star soul for him. There's also a primal shard in there and six star legendary accessories for the Knight's Revenant. You know, for a new player, this is absolutely massive. And even for anyone, it is extremely difficult to get Certainly, you know, a one, two, or three star soul is kind of doable. Four star is pretty expensive, and five star is extremely expensive and tough to get. Uh, it can take you a massive amount of time to get five star souls. Like, I've got champions I use literally every day, and I don't have five star souls for them, right? Because it's so difficult to get. So do not sleep on that. It's absolutely huge. Um, and it will be very helpful for him as well. Right, so that's how we get him. What about He-Man? Well, He-Man is from the champion pass if i check out the elite pass it's 40 dollars. i think that the xena one was 50 dollars, so this is now cheaper but yeah basically we've got the he-man pass there is a free track up here and then there is the elite track sorry let, let me move me over i'm he-man now <laughs> the elite track down the bottom so in the free track you're just going to get some some rewards actually decent rewards like the the six star banner that's great. Some small speed glyphs. You will get a He-Man avatar. Again, that's just a profile picture. Six-star necklace, six-star ring, legendary. These things are super helpful, honestly, to get. As a new player, again, it's really tough to get those accessories. They might be rubbish, but hey, just getting a chance at decent ones is okay. And there's some okay stuff. Feast is quite good. This is actually huge for a free player, for a new player. A feast takes any champion up to six stars. So like, what? you start the game, yeah? Instead of having to level up your, your Skeletor through every level, you can just bam, put him or with your starter champion. If you're kind of slow doing it, right? Take your starter right from, honestly, you can go from three star level 30 right up to six star. 
it's that good. Like, just go straight up. So that's extremely valuable for a new player. For a longer term player, it's actually still pretty decent. It's it's like five five star chickens and possibly four four stars and three three star chickens all rolled into one. Um, kind of they're sort of ideally best used, by the way. I would say on epics is usually the best way to use them because then it also can, it takes them from 40 up to six star straight the way there. Legendaries start at five star, so you don't get the four star chicken aspect of it, but it doesn't make a huge difference because it's the five star, the five five star chickens effectively, which are the best bit. But uh, yeah, then you've got the paid pass. That's the $40 version. In that, you're going to get a mythical piece of instinct weaponry, a helmet, a shield, gloves, chest, and boots. Now, this is a little tricky there is, <laughs> funny enough, there is a paid pass for Instinct on right now. So that's a little cheeky. Instinct is only available from paid sources, and it is a four-piece set. So you need four good pieces. You know, you, you could definitely make the weapon, helmet, and shield. They'll probably be okay. It's pretty hard to get good gloves at chest or boots, unless these have fixed stats, and I doubt that they do. They might be absolutely rubbish. Uh, so it could actually be pretty hard to get a usable set out of them. Uh, but you might get a couple of good people. I mean, nonetheless, even if you ignore the set bonus, you're still getting a six-star mythical shield, which is decent. Uh, the main thing, of course, a couple of speed cliffs, six stars good. The main thing you're paying for is He-Man. Um, so look, this is up to you, <laughs> right? Is $40 for a champion worth it to you? Um, it's very expensive, right? You could buy an entire video game for that. It's true. At the same time, in terms of Raid Shadow Legends, if you want to buy a Legendary, it's very expensive. So to put it in context, um, right here, I could spend, let's say I spent, uh, well, let's, let's go with the $40. Let's say $50 here, let's say for $200. Uh, that would give me five pulls of this, five 6% chances for a Legendary. So again, it's not quite, we're spend, spending $50 here compared to 40 but again, in Raid Shadow Legends terms, let's say very rough numbers, $40 is like what, a 25% chance to get a Legendary or something like that. You know, if you want to buy Legendaries in Raid, they are ridiculously expensive. So by objective standards, $40 to get a champion in this game is bonkers. By Raid Shadow Legends standards, it's extremely cheap. So it depends what your standards are. Do you have kind of just real world standards or do you have Rage Shadow Legend standards? That's up to you. Um, but that is how you get He-Man. Uh, it is probably the only source of He-Man. Um, I, I don't know. Do we have info on Skeletor here? Skeletor might be available after this or he might be limited edition. I don't I don't actually know. Let me see. Let me see. Did they, did they share that with us? Uh, da 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 battle pass um yeah i'm not sure skeletor chase is skeletor available after this um the skeletor chase by the way cannot be started after the 25th of december so after christmas no more skeletor uh da -da -da -da. skeletor cannot be summoned from shards the only way to get your hands on him is from the chase okay it looks like they're not gonna sometimes they add these these login champions into the the summon pool afterwards it looks like skeletor exclusive to this chase you will not be available outside of it and almost 100 percent it's got to be the same for he-man the only way to possibly get he-man is going to be in this actually there's one other way they have said that there will be a one i believe just one summon event i think for xena they did the same maybe two where they might have done like a a 10x for Xena from Ancient Shards and a 10x from Sacred Shards, maybe a 10x from Primals. We might see, I think we will see that with He Man as well. If you don't want to buy him in the pass, they'll put a boosted event on the shards in game, and you can obviously get those shards in game for free. Um, I would think, honestly, that's probably not going to be a great idea to do, though, um, unless it's kind of overlapping with the fusion or something. In my opinion, if you want He Man, you basically have to accept that you, you, this is elite pass. It's 40 bucks. Yeah, but that is the best way to get him. Chasing him with shards in game is probably not a good idea, but we'll see when that comes out. I'll talk about it when it happens. But uh, yeah, let's look at the champion. Are they any good? There we go. That's the whole stuff going on. Let's look at Skeletor first. How good is Skeletor? He is free. Everyone gets him. Number one, visually looks cool. I haven't read his lore yet. 
Um, but I read Skeletor. Uh, he Man's lore is very funny. You should read He Man's lore. It's great. Looking at him, he is a uh, spirit affinity support legendary from the Knights Revenant. Uh, stats, base stats are pretty standard uh, support legendary. Honestly, they're fine. 60 accuracy in all battles. Again, that's a good aura. Pretty standard at this point. Nice for a login legendary. The all battles, I think, is great, right? Because these champions are massively helpful to new players. Uh, having it be just very generally useful is good. You have more niche auras, which might be 80 or even like 100 in extremely strong cases in specific areas of the game, like maybe whatever, 80 accuracy in arena or something. Uh, 60 accuracy in all battles is pretty good. Uh, his A1, Havoc Scythe, attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 75, that books to 100% chance of increasing the duration of a random debuff on the target by one turn. Actually really nice. This is great for like Demon Lord, uh, lots of, of bosses. You know, he's going to be generally useful, I think. We'll, we'll see for most players. Increasing debuffs against a boss, a single target boss is, is really nice. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, and it's each hit, so you can do it twice. You know, extending HP burn or decrease defense or decrease attack can be very, very impactful. Skull Comet. This one I've seen is very unique. Five turn cooldown. That books to a three turn cooldown. Attacks one enemy. Has a 75 books to 100% chance of placing petrification on the target for one turn. Very rare. This is super rare. So that's cool. If the boss, if the target is a boss, puts 50% decreased attack and 30% decreased speed for two turns instead. Whenever a petrification debuff is removed or expires on an enemy, has a 50, again, that's booking to 75% chance to place a 30% decreased speed debuff on the enemy for one turn. Petrification, if you click the more info tab, you can see everything. Petrification is very powerful and very rare. Very few champions can do it. So when an, a, a champion is petrified, they have all of their buffs removed and they miss their next turn. Um... When they're under petrification, they are unable to receive buffs, but they can get more debuffs. Instant effects do not work except for the remove debuff effect. Finally, while under petrification, they only receive 40% of any incoming damage. So you, you take less damage when you're petrified. That's a benefit, but you take 300% more damage from bombs. You just get destroyed. Uh, it's very interesting. Very, very unique. I am not sure how this interacts with stone skin in the arena. I actually don't know because we've never had a champion that does this before. Uh, very few champions. So Mithrala Lifebane is, is probably the classic example of a champion. But she, is sort of, she puts out Hex and then she's a chance to petrify enemies. Um, same thing. Another classic petrification champion is the mythical Arbeis uh, who... There's a chance to petrify enemies when attacked with revive on death. We've I don't think we have another champion that can proactively place petrification. This is very new. Uh, so it's interesting. It makes enemies way more susceptible to bombs, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's good. And it makes them miss their turn. They lose all their buffs and all of that. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, for the boss version, most bosses are immune to decrease speed. There's only a few. Um, so it's most of the time it's going to be just decreased attack against a boss, which is okay, but it's, you know, a three turn cooldown, single target decreased attack is really nothing good. Um, this is really all about that petrification, I'd say. And yeah, then when the petrification is removed, you can put decreased speed, which is pretty awesome. Let's look at his other moves. Begone fools! Exclamation mark. Five turn goes to three turn cooldown, puts a 50% increased accuracy buff on all allies for two turns. I mean, you combo that with his passive. He's going to really help early players progress. Um, it's just on a short cooldown, three turn cooldown. That's really, really good for progressing in the game. Also has a 75 bucks to 100% chance to steal any block debuffs buffs and one other random buff from each enemy. Then decreases all enemies' turn meters by 15%. If an enemy is from the Telerian League, decreases that enemy's turn meter by 30% instead. I definitely feel like this guy is good with bombs in Arena. Right? You put him into Arena, you do this move first, and you steal block debuffs. Now, Stone Skin is a problem. You can't push turn meter back if they've Stone Skin. He does have the chance to steal Stone Skin. He will have a chance, but Stone Skin, there's a 50-50 that the set just stops Stone Skin from being stolen. So maybe it doesn't work. Uh, but I mean, potentially you do steal some Stone Skin, push their turn meters back. Uh, and yeah, you've got the increased accuracy for bombs. If you don't steal Stone Skin, you can still bomb them. Block debuffs, some sets. So Feral set, which is new, does it. Immunity set. Some of those sets are becoming more common. 
uh, because they protect you from bombs at the start of the fight. And bombs are very strong in the meta game right now in Arena. Um, so he actually could steal those block debuffs buffs. He can, yeah, he can basically go yoink. That's protecting you from bombs. It's gone. Here's increased accuracy from my bomb champion. And yeah, my bomb champion's now good to go. Like you throw him in, Arbiter, Skeletor, and bomb champion. And like, yeah, turn meter boost, increase attack from Arbiter. You increase accuracy from him, steal block debuffs, and then you bomb. And like, that's a pretty strong combo right there. Um, yeah, that, that it's certainly interesting. Uh, yeah, interesting. Again, he can also steal a bunch of different buffs, and he is stealing them. It's not just removing. He is stealing them. So he's going to get a lot of buffs himself, which is interesting. Master of Evil is passive. Whenever this champion attempts to place a debuff, steal a buff, decrease an enemy's turn meter, or increase the duration of a debuff on an enemy, increases this champion's accuracy by 20 for each buff on that enemy. Kind of cool. So it's just going to make him, you know, more reliable at at stealing stuff and at placing debuffs, that's nice. And again, that increased accuracy presumably will be boosted by his 50% increased accuracy buff, so he's getting more out of that. This is going to make him... I think for early players, again, it's going to mean, okay, you don't have the best gear. doesn't matter. Throw him into Arena. He's getting so much accuracy, he's going to just succeed at this stuff anyway, pretty much no matter what. Whenever this champion is hit, has a 40% chance to place a 50% decreased resistance debuff on the attacker for one turn. Chance increases to 75% against champions from the Telerian League. Uh, we do have this sort of niche stuff where he's better against Telerian League. I like the lore. That's a bit of fun. Uh, the Telerian League, by the way, is um, is these four. Banner Lords, High Elf, Sacred Order, Barbarians. That's sort of like a, a fun lore thing. Uh, will it be that useful that often? I don't know, but it's there. Uh, I mean, certainly interesting. Decreased resistance is not commonly very useful uh i would say but again it will be something i think this is good for new players right you're going up against bosses that you're struggling to beat between his increased accuracy placing then the decreased resistance the accuracy aura that could really help you against you know some perhaps some dungeon bosses it will definitely definitely help you in doom tower against those bosses 100 percent um you know it's going to help you in all of those areas uh, to, to beat bosses that you maybe otherwise couldn't beat. So I think that's pretty nice. So yeah, my thoughts on Skeletor. Um, I think for an early player, he's great. For a later player, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I think he's useful for bombs, right? I think he could be a useful increase accuracy champs for bombs for late game players. Like I said, Arbiter, Skeletor, Bomb. It's a pretty nice trio for, for arena offense, honestly. I'm very curious how Skull Comet works. Does this go through Stone Skin or not? I don't know. Um, if it does go through Stone Skin, he's extremely good. If it doesn't, then it's more questionable. But it's still a very strong debuff. I, I think he could certainly be useful. I think he is, you know, to be fair, he's very similar in a lot of ways to Loki. I think it's going to be similar sort of power level. Loki is the last login champion. I think it's very, very similar to that. Um, yeah, I think they're actually very similar champions really in general. Uh, but yeah, I think Skeletor, he's pretty decent. Um, will I use him? I don't know. It depends how this works. Maybe. Probably not for me. Uh, but maybe for my bomb stuff. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, this reminds me like a little bit of Lady Kimmy minus the turn meter boost. It's, it's, it's interesting. He does have some use, but he's not like completely bonkers. Um, that's sort of my thoughts on him. Let's check out He-Man. Let me know what you think of Skeletor. Let's check out He-Man. Here he is. Again, he looks ridiculous. He looks amazing. I mean, he looks funny enough a bit like a barbarian. He would have fit in barbarians. That's a cool animation. He would have fit in barbarians, but uh, oh, he even has 12 reviews already. Look at that. The reviews for He-Man are pouring in. Uh, if you want, by the way, that's not cheap. If you want to get He-Man like right now, I didn't mention this, but normally you have to do like daily challenges, like log into the game, use some silver, use some energy, right? To get, to get He-Man stuff. Uh, to get him immediately, you have to spend 60 US. So someone's, we've got at least 12 people have already, this has just gone live, already bought the $60 to instantly unlock him. Um, <laughs> so there you go. People, people, people are spending for He-Man. <laughs> it's happening. Uh, let's look at him. Attack based legendary from Sacred Order. Uh, fairly standard attack based champion stats, you know, solid base speed, all the rest. His base attack isn't crazy high. Uh, his base HP is, is reasonably high. Yeah, so let's take a look. 28% ally speed in arena aura. Uh, that's very solid. Pretty common now as well. Some of the better arena champions. I'm thinking like Sun Wukong is a great example. 
uh gergo the auger got reworked with this as well this seems to be a fairly common now go-to for arena champions looking at his skills attorney and slash attacks one enemy puts an extra hit on enemies from the corrupted so it's way stronger against enemies from the corrupted which uh, the corrupted is of course uh, Demon Spawn, Undead Horde, Dark Elves, and Knights Revenant, which is where Skeletor is. So I think they're sort of designed in a way to counter each other, which is kind of fun in the lore, right? That's sort of a fun thing. Also fills this champion's turn meter by 10%, and an additional 2% for each buff on this champion. One thing that's very interesting, damage based on attack and HP. He scales off of both, and it does have 30% damage from books. Now, this is kind of nuts. That he's going to scale off of both stats. It's very unusual. Attack will be his main scaling. They put the main scaling option first. HP is a lesser scaling thing. But I'm very curious how his damage multipliers are going to look. And what this will mean. Um, it's a decent A1. Seems like it's going to be very strong against enemies from the Corrupted. There's some very strong arena champions in the Corrupted. Interesting. A2, Luminous Cleave. Five turn cooldown. Books to a four turn. So it's long. Four turn cooldown. 20% damage from books, attacks one enemy before attacking, puts 50% increased attack on this champ for two turns, ignores stone skin, and if he kills an enemy, fills the turn meter of all allies by 30%. Pretty cool. The big question here is, how hard does this attack? I like that he self-buffs. That's actually really nice, right? That's really great. Self-buffs is cool. Ignores stone skin. It depends how hard he hits. So for example, Georgid. Is probably the best example I can think of this. He ignores all of this stuff, but he ignores stone skin. Georgit hits incredibly hard, so this is super useful. On the other hand, uh, there's Ilil. Ilil has an attack that ignores stone skin, but this attack doesn't do much damage. So Ilil almost completely useless because he can kill very squishy champions with stone skin, but he can't kill anyone who's even half tanky. I'm very curious, how hard will He-Man hit? That's the question. He self-buffs, which is nice. How hard will this hit? That will determine everything. Can he actually kill tough champions through stone skin? Or is he only killing weaker champions? I think, though, this is, again, it's useful for players, for sure. Uh, stone skin is very common in Arena. Um, and yeah, if this gives you a way to kill champions through that, that's pretty great. Uh, especially damage dealers at the moment are very often using stone skin accessories. And it will be quite easy to kill through their stone skin buff. It can be nice. The 30% turn meter fail again. It's also decent. So it's a decent move. It's a long cooldown, but it's decent. I have the power! Exclamation mark. Four turn goes to a three turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies. Damage based on attack and HP again. Damage inflicted by this skill increases by 10% for each buff placed on this champion before the skill is used. Up to 500%! Resets after the skill is used. Crazy. Uh... I mean, you're never going to get anywhere close to that cap in usual play, because if you're doing this move every three turns, <laughs> you know, like, that's so many buffs. You need, what, 50 buffs? That's a crazy amount of buffs. 50 buffs is bonkers. Uh, what this does mean, I do think that He-Man is obviously then really going to want, and he also, you know, he, he gets more turn meter for every buff on him. He really wants champions that are giving him a lot of buffs. That's really what he wants. As many buffs as possible, and his damage is going to go up, up, up. Um... I'm interested to see how hard is this hit. I will say I'm a little bit worried that this baseline won't hit that hard and that it's sort of like for this to hit as hard as a normal AoE, you're expected to have like five or so buffs or something and then you need more buffs than that for it to start to do actual good damage. I, like what is the baseline? Or maybe the baseline damage is really good and the extra stacks from buffs are just going to let him go crazy. I just don't know. But he'll be very strong at buff champions. That's a little bit tricky. I mean, the obvious one that jumps out to me, but is obviously, you know, do you have or not? A Shu Zen is a good one. Increased attack, crit rate, crit damage, and gives him an extra turn. That's really good. Uh, he'd be very good, funny enough, with Fina from the High Elves. Uh, increased attack, crit rate, crit damage, and all allies, if she's got another High Elf like Arbiter or something, extra turn, then gives block debuffs, block damage, counter attack, resets their skills as well. I mean, that could be kind of crazy. There's some champions that put out a ton of buffs. Um, and this will obviously scale well in the future. I'm interested to see how hard does this hit? Again, that's the big question. How hard does it hit? Uh, needless to say, probably wait to see a He-Man showcase before you... Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I could buy him today. I could buy him just to do a showcase. Maybe I will. I don't know. Should I do that? Maybe. Master of the Universe increases his attack and HP by 5% for each buff placed on him, up to 50%. Now that's cool. 
places 25% strengthen on this champ for two turns at the start of each round. Also places a 25 strengthen buff on this champ for two turns. Whenever an enemy's HP drops below 50%, after this champion attacks and he's immune to petrification oh that's interesting so uh, that feels like it's again a sort of counter skeletor thing uh like i said petrification is pretty rare being immune is nice but not too impactful but that's interesting but yeah his attack and hp scales up for every buff placed on him um i i i don't think that's perm i mean i don't know maybe it's permanent or maybe it's just based off of his current buffs i'm actually not sure so, like, if I put three buffs on him, but they expire, do I keep the 15% or does it fall off? Um, because you can have 10 buffs maximum, which would be the 50%. So I don't know. I'm very curious about that. But considering that he scales off of both attack and HP, that could actually make him very survivable. Then he's also giving himself strengthen. Now, in the arena meta, defense, his defense isn't terrible, but it's not good. Defense is not super important because everyone is running as much ignore defense as possible. Um, so defense isn't that good. HP is very strong and like, strengthen is actually a very strong buff for survivability. So he actually becomes pretty tanky potentially. Um, I don't know. Like if you build, do you build him for HP? I'm not sure. But he might be reasonably survivable for, he'll be more survivable than an average damage dealer. You know, to be honest, which is very interesting. It's very different. He's going to be getting strengthened very consistently, which is also going to be powering up his, his A3 a little bit as well. That's interesting. Like, he'd be getting his strength in. He could potentially get extra HP. He's not going to be, like, a, a, a complete tank, but, you know, he's, he's going to be harder to kill than usual. Yeah, you put all this stuff together. How good do I think He-Man is? I'm not sure because I don't know what his damage multipliers are. I think he's fun. He doesn't strike me as being like, he's definitely not like the, the best champ in the game. I'd be surprised if he was. Um, like, I, I don't think he's he's the best of the best. Um, yeah, like, I, I, I think that Void Legendaries like Georgia are going to be better. I think, you know, like Mythicals like Siegfriend are going to be way better. I don't think this guy is changing up high-end arena. I think for like a newer player, though, that's like, oh, if I spend $40, am I going to get something extremely useful for a new player? I think, yeah, 100%. It's a great arena aura that's very useful for new players. I think that's what it's really targeted at for new to mid game players. Great aura, reasonably tanky champion who's going to give you an ignore stone skin. He self buffs. He's hopefully going to hit fairly hard. Um, yeah, he sort of seems like that sort of like a tier legendary same with skeletor they both sort of have that vibe to me if they're not the best of the best by any means but they're very solid and for newer players are going to be massive uh but yeah again bearing in mind he-man is not free he is 40 dollars at least really to get him most likely uh again there might be shard events but it's pretty expect him to be a 40 dollar champion uh he certainly might be useful uh but you know it is it's a lot of money um i mean that being said look Honestly, if a new player is like, yo, I want to play Ray Chow Legends, it's a free to play game, you know, I'll play, I'm enjoying it, I'll, I'll pay $40, it's like buying a $40 game, brand, cool, I, I want to do that, you're going to get a decent chunk out of it, uh, it's, it's totally up to you, really, um, but yeah, that's He-Man, let me know what you think about that, oh, we also have, oh gosh, so we've got, obviously, the, the fusion has started for stock, who's really good, new player, by the way, you're not going to be able to do stock, you really need to be uh, like hardcore players like we have content creators do like a, a free-to-play challenge and they are often able to do a fusions after playing the game for about a month um but like they know exactly what they're doing and they're min maxing right like crazy i think for a usual player you got to be playing the game for i mean for a usual hardcore player probably for like two or three months and for a, a normal player it might be more like four or five six months before like if you're casual before you can consider doing a fusion i don't know let me know again in the comments what you think about that we do have a summon pool event on at the moment as well um this one has volcanos he's extremely good so he is absolutely worth going for the free there'll probably be some free prisms up for grabs definitely worth going for that that being said this is going to be during a fusion maybe during dungeon divers i don't know let me see it'd be really tough to get these but volcanos is extremely good it's probably worth chasing the yeah like champion oh that's rough like champion training stop with the five fragments you can go further for an immortal five essence and 40 if you've got a ton of resources this guy's already done he's already done it what the hell man <laughs> he's so what um that's really this is definitely worth going for if you've got an abundance of resources 
if you're struggling, obviously don't. But for a late game player, this is definitely worth it. For an early game player, it's probably too expensive. Um, but for a late game player, it's worth the chance at Vulcanos and five red essence is worth it for late game as well. It's been my take. I'm going to do it. But if you've been playing for really less than a year, you probably shouldn't. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the chance for him is good. The four percent legendaries in here, so it's only six percent chance. Remember, for a legendary, the four percent ones are all pretty solid. Duchess and and Kaimar are extremely good. Um, this is very solid. I mean, they're all solid. Helicath opens up uh, unkillable team or block damage teams for like Iron Twins and Clan Boss and stuff. They're all good. The epics are decent as well. Like if you get an allure, that can be extremely helpful. Let's be honest. Um, the other, uh, the other, you know, the epics, let me take it back. The epics are only okay. You've got some duds in here that you wouldn't use or that are just not going to be crazy useful until very niche circumstances. But um, yeah, the others are decent. Allure is definitely the best. The epics for general use because of Fire Knight and Dark Fae. Uh, the legendaries are mostly very good. Uh, like Countess Lix and Mortu are probably the less useful, but they're still useful in their niches. They've got niche use. So yeah, pretty nice. There you go. Guys, let me know what you think about this. Uh, I will consider... Um, I'll think about it. What I'm going to do with you, I I might just buy the elite pass and and just just do it and do a video, right? Just for the sake of a video for you guys. Yeah, you know, I thinking about. It, I probably will. Let me know in the comments. Should I do? It? I might put up a poll. Uh, I think I will put up a poll, and you guys can vote in that. I'm leaning towards yeah. I'll just freaking. I'll just buy it and level the guy up and show it to you guys, right? That seems like a useful thing to do for you. So I think I will do it. Um, I doubt I'll use them after that, but hey, it will make a helpful video. That's worth it. I think I'll do that. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.